Christian friends who wait for the coming year. I'm going to lose 20 pounds. I'm going to quit smoking. I'm going to cut up my credit cards. I'm going to spend more time with family. I'm going to stop making New Year's resolutions. No doubt, over the course of your life, you've made one or two New Year's resolutions. And over the course of your life, you've probably not kept New Year's resolutions. Tonight, God would focus our attention not on New Year resolutions that we've tried to keep, but on a New Year's resolution that he will keep. As we take a look at that parable, we're going to see that the Lord resolves to judge severely, and the Lord resolves to have mercy generously. Now those two resolutions sounds like I've made an error in biblical interpretation. How, how can that be true? How can he judge severely and how can he have mercy generously? We'll have to take a look at what led Jesus to speaking this parable. He had come across a group of people that had the mistaken impression that the reason why a bad thing happened to someone was because they were bad. And the reason why good things happened to them is, well, because they're basically pretty good. They, they came to Jesus and, and asked this. They were, they were thinking, Jesus replied to his answer. Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all the other Galileans because they suffered this way? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. Or those 18 who died when the Tower of Siloam fell on them, do you think they were more guilty than all the others living in Jerusalem? I tell you, no. But unless you repent, you too will all perish. The headlines had told the story. Worshippers had gone into the temple, and for some reason, Herod had his men kill them as they offered sacrifices. And they came to Jesus. Jesus, were, were those Galileans really bad Galileans that this happened to them? Or, and that tower that fell. Were, were there some juicy secrets that we didn't know about them and that's why they had this happen to them? And Jesus says no. The people that came to Jesus with those questions had kindergarten logic. They thought... Bad things happen to bad people, and good things happen to good people. And, well, we're, we're the good people, obviously, because we have not had really too much bad happen to us. Jesus wanted them to think about when bad things happened to remind them, repent. So he tells them this story. A man had a fig tree planted in his vineyard, and he went to look for fruit on it, but did not find any. So he said to the man who took care of the vineyard, For three years now I've been coming to look for fruit on this fig tree and haven't found any. Cut it down. Why should it use up the soil? Sir, the man replied, Leave it alone for one more year. I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. It was the story of Israel. God had pictured them in the Old Testament over and over again as his vineyard. He had planted them. He had taken great care for them. He had given them everything that it needed to flourish. Yet time and time again, he came to look for fruit. And he often found nothing but rot. It didn't change much. Jesus' day. The people of Israel at that time, God had graciously cared for them, had kept them together, had flourished their nation even under the rule of the Romans, and yet Jesus wept over Jerusalem. Because like their ancestors, they didn't listen to the prophets. 
no fruit was found. And the Lord comes to us on this New Year's Eve and says, You, you are my plants. You didn't just happen to grow. I planted you. In my church, I tended you. What does he find? How do our fruits compare to God's gracious care? Oftentimes, we think we've got time. We've got time to brew some more fruits. I'll, I'll get to a little bit more study of God's word sometime this year. I'll, I'll, I'll do a little bit more service, but I'll offer a little bit more. But first, I got to make sure I'm okay and look at the fruits and see how lacking, see how rotten they sometimes are. And so the Lord says, repent. He says, I don't want you judging others when you see bad things happen. I want you to be reminded that I judge severely. You think you can just keep on saying no to me? His anger burns. Or even one refusal. The Lord resolves to do that. But his resolution does not stop. Sir, the man replied, leave it alone for one more year. And I'll dig around it and fertilize it. If it bears fruit next year, fine. If not, then cut it down. The Lord promises you this resolution in the coming year. He will have mercy generously on you. That plant didn't deserve any, but God, at least one more year. That's the way he treated the Old Testament Israelites. Gracious after graciousness, after graciousness. And it continued during the days of Jesus as he walked on the face of this earth and was grace in the flesh. And he promises you this. He will bestow grace on you this new year too. What will the new year hold? There's a lot of things of the new year that will remain questions. This resolution of the Lord will not. He promises it. He looks at you. His lovely plan. He says, I promise. I will take care of you. I promise. I promise to, to pour out on you my grace of my word. I promise to give you the water that you need as I help you recall all the blessings of your baptism. It nourishes you. It reminds you day after day, this is how you live for me. fertilize you each and every time you come and taste that I am good. My body and my blood given for you. I don't know what the new year holds always, but this you can be certain of. Maybe parts of your New Year resolutions will be to produce more fruits of faith. And if that is the case, I encourage you 
make those resolutions and, and to stick with them. But the only way that you can stick with them is by remembering this resolution of your God. He will pour out his grace on you through his word, through his sacraments. If you want to resolve to do anything, Resolve to remember his graciousness. Resolve to remember his promise. The Lord will continue to tend and keep you. This past summer, as we planted a garden over at the parsonage, it, it didn't get the care that it needed. The weeds grew a little bit too much, didn't get watered quite enough. Still, there was a little bit of a harvest, but the Lord says, that will never be the case with me and you. I'll never forget. He'll see that you need a little bit of pruning. The sin sprouts up in your life, and he'll snip it. He'll dig the weeds around that try and crowd into your life and get you to forget his goodness. graciously pour out on you the forgiveness that you need that you might grow and produce his fruit. God grant that in the new year.